The St. Louis Science Center is filled with all kinds of stuff, moving, making noise, things to touch and try, things to watch. It's the modern interactive approach to science education. The Science Center works very hard to maintain its modern exhibits, keeping its dinosaurs looking and moving and sounding so lifelike, at least as far as anyone knows. But there are also here and there bits and pieces from bygone eras of museums. There's the skeleton of the former St. Louis Zoo star, Phil the Gorilla. Nearby, the transparent woman you might remember from the old museum at Oak Knoll Park. There are other things here at the Science Center that were inherited when it came into existence. The iron lung, the glass eyes, just a tiny sampling of the medical collection, and that's just one part of a collection of collections. The Science Center has so much stuff, in fact, that it requires full-time attention in a completely different building. At Manchester and Kings Highway is the Community Science Resource Center. Teachers come here for workshops and things. But behind a locked door is a climate-controlled storage area. Melinda Frillman is in charge of this place, and it is full of things, some curious, some priceless. Any idea how much stuff? We, or are you still counting we it? We kind of guess at about 110,000 objects. Really? Yeah. Yes. And some of those are little tiny Little things. tiny, tiny shells okay. to, you know, giant full-mounted bears. They have an amazing assortment of stuffed animals, but they also have insects, all kinds of cultural artifacts, and shells, and rocks, and fossils. But wait, there's more. There's model airplanes, little elephants, all that medical equipment, and cameras. There are shelves and shelves of lanterns, a cabinet of skeletons, a box with a mummy. A lot of stuff was assembled by collectors, a lot of them world travelers and amateur scientists, a century or more ago. But these are real authentic shrunken heads. Shrunken heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, this is the sort of thing I would think that, that would have been brought back by some oh, yeah. world traveler coming back to St. Louis mm -hmm. or, or... Yeah, they were pretty whatever. popular um, around the turn of the century. Um, people kept them on their mantle. Really? Yeah, they were pretty really? popular. Now you've got a couple of real rarities back here, huh? Very, very rare um, objects. And do you know wh where this came from? And They're you... Middle Mississippian. Uh -huh. um, this actually came um, from Arkansas, I believe. Um, the nursing mother figurine is local from East St. Louis. And, and this is something that people have come and yeah, looked think at, studied. These have been studied. in shows. They've been studied. Um, very rare, um, very priceless. Uh -huh. um, they're, they're, um, it is not really a museum now. It's more of an artifact lending library. And you will find pieces of the Science Center collections in displays throughout the area and in museums around the country. All of this is really too big of a job for one person, and the key to taking care of all this stuff and keeping track of it is having a loyal, hardworking group of volunteers. So this goes on, what, a couple times a week when you have uh, Yeah, Tuesdays and in? Thursdays the volunteers are in, uh -huh. and um, they'll do anything from um, cataloging to um, just recording, and then obviously we have a lot of data entry going on. A lot of the work here is tedious. They have to update old card files on each and every object, double-checking information before things are entered into a new computer database. These two are rock collectors who started working on the rocks and minerals collection and have moved on to the fossils. It's a challenge because as you go along, you got all the books, you do research on it, and you learn. It's a constant learning experience which keeps your brain... Most of the volunteers here can be described as enthusiasts rather than scientific professionals, and they are really part of a very long tradition, a tradition that not only brought about a lot of these collections, but gets us to the very roots of today's modern science center. The St. Louis Science Center, as we know today, has only been around since the early 1990s, and those collections at that time were already really, really old. The story of all this goes back a long time, back to a day when the line between the professional scientist and the amateur was a lot blurrier than it is today. 
The story in St. Louis, all of this really goes back 150 years. St. Louis in 1856 was the growing Western American metropolis, and it was developing as a center of culture and learning. A lot of that was being influenced by educated German immigrants, like Dr. George Engelman, a physician who was a lot more than a doctor. He was what might have been called at the time a man of science. He was, among other things, an expert botanist. You can find his bust at the Missouri Botanical Garden, which he helped Henry Shaw start up in 1859. That was three years after Engelman had organized the Academy of Science of St. Louis for people like him to share their knowledge, research, and ideas. You may have never noticed, but inside the St. Louis Science Center, although not really a part of it, are the offices of the Academy of Science of St. Louis, still around after 150 years, and with the archives to prove it. This is from the mid to late 1800s. This was Engelman's work, meteorological work. I'm going to be very careful here. Dr. Engelman, besides being a physician this and a botanist, kept besides meticulous local weather observations for nearly 50 years. He has all of these meteorological um, data that he wants to share with the world, and he needed a vehicle for doing that. So that's one reason why the organization was formed. That and all of the great information, artifacts, things that were coming from the Lewis and Clark expedition and, and after, um, were going to be lost, lost to the world. So the Academy got together, they started publishing a book, Transactions, which was basically the scientific periodical coming out of St. Louis. They decided that with all of the great scientific information coming from the West, they needed to have a vehicle for capturing that and disseminating it along, around the world. Mm -hmm. so and these remain mind, a valuable resource for today's scientists. The Academy regularly gets requests for copies of old journal articles. Do you have this from 1907? I'm doing a book on botany. Could you have something from 1905? I understand transactions. Is, could you send me a copy? So this is more than just your archives. This is still valuable. It's still alive. Scientific information. Exactly. Here. Over the years, in its various homes, the Academy assembled a library, organized lectures, and started a museum. In 1959, the Academy opened the Museum of Science and Natural History at Oak Knoll Park in Clayton. And then in the 1980s, the Academy backed the creation of the new tax-supported Science Center which opened first at the McDonald Planetarium and then at the new building across Highway 40. The Academy of Science turned over its collections and got out of the museum business, but not out of science. And this city is so alive with science and engineering and technology um, that our job is the same job that it was 150 years ago, which is to take that information, take the scientists, and put them out there in the public so that the public understand. And so, for example, the Academy sponsors lectures. This one at the Zoo Auditorium was on human evolution by University of Missouri St. Louis anthropologist Donna Hart. How much interest is there in this sort of thing? Well, the room was filled, as it might have been for a similar lecture in, say, 1875. And that's the important thing. It's translating that difficult, cumbersome, sometimes conflicting information and translating that so that the public can understand it. Another Academy program, and perhaps it's best known, is the Greater St. Louis Science Fair. This, its Speakers Bureau, hooking up scientists with just about any group, and recognition of the area's leading scientists, all of this will keep the 150-year-old Academy of Science quite busy in future years. While the things of its past, the stuff that was collected and brought to St. Louis by previous generations of science enthusiasts, naturalists, travelers, they are still a valuable resource in the hands of the newer Science Center. In a way, always waiting to be rediscovered.
and that's